Well, good morning. Welcome to our daily psalm. Today we're reading through Psalm 148, Psalm 148. And Psalm 148 is a psalm which really needs to be read in one go without any interruptions, um, without any uh, comments or explanations as we're going through it. So let's be aware of its features before we give it voice. Uh, First of all, Psalm 148 is right at the top of the praise song charts. Um, Like a number of other psalms, Psalm 148 has the word Alleluia uh, as both its first and its last word. Alleluia means, of course, praise the Lord. But it's the extent of that summons to praise which sets Psalm 148 apart. The sheer scale of the call, the width and breadth of the command to praise is breathtakingly vast. Psalm 148 has two sections. The first section, verses 1 to 6, calls from praise from up there. And the second, verses 7 through to 14, um, calls for uh, praise from down here, from down below. Uh, The first section summons worshippers from the angel host, from the sun, the moon, the stars and the clouds. And the end of that section, verses 5 and 6, tell us that they are to praise God for the fact that he commanded them into being and set them in their places. The second section from verses 7 through to 14 calls for praise from sea creatures, from weather agents, from the plant and animal kingdoms, and finally from humankind, <clears throat> all ages and backgrounds, from the noblest to the humblest. And the reason that they are to worship God, uh, humankind in particular, is because God has revealed his name himself to them and therefore they can praise God, conscious of who he is, and can praise him for his grace in providing them with, right at the very final verse, verse 14, providing them with a horn. It's a word for, uh, in the context, meaning a strong deliverer. And we may think of that horn in the Old Testament as the king, uh, or in the New Testament as Jesus himself. So in the first section, praise is directed to the one who creates, And in the second section, praise is given to the love that redeems. Two other points, well, two other words really to mention about this psalm. The word all appears nine times in Psalm 148. It's a triple, triple emphasis that everything and everyone is summoned to give their praise to the Lord. The whole world, everything made by God, everything created is to worship him. But it's the second word, praise, which dominates this psalm. Thirteen times we are all called to exercise this highest and most profound but universal capacity in all creation. And we might, as we read through, we might wonder how sun, moon and mountains and fruit trees and fish are supposed to praise God. What form does that take? Well, they do so by their movement, though admittedly mountains move rather slowly, um, by their movement and by their sheer presence, drawing attention to the God who made them the way they are in all their variety, complexity and beauty. What about birds and animals? How do they praise? Well, the word praise is a translation of the Hebrew verb halal, which means to make a la 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 sound. In other words, it's a wordless, vocal noise. A cow's moo, or a bird's tweet, inarticulately and noisefully make reference to the God who gives them their voice. Well, let's add our voices to praise our Lord as we read through Psalm 148. Alleluia! Praise the Lord from the heavens! Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light, all billions of them. Praise him, highest heavens. That might be a reference to heaven itself. And you waters above the heavens. Might be an expression for rain clouds. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place for ever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. 
Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, storm wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and birds on the wing, kings of the earth and all nations, leaders and all rulers of the world, young men and women, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted, his splendour above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, and praise for all his faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who come near to him. Alleluia! It's great that in Psalm 148, the climax of the song comes in the form of the gospel, really. The whole Bible story, the end scene of the drama, the children of Israel, the children of God, a people who come near him in all this vastness of creation. That's our purpose, to come near to God. And it's a scene which is depicted almost in the last uh, verses of the Bible story itself. Revelation 21 verse 3 says, See, the home of God is with humankind. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. No wonder we shout Alleluia with the birds and the fruit trees and the mountains and the stars and the sun and the moon and everything else. Let's take a moment to pray. O oh, glorious and wonderful and majestic God, your whole creation sings your marvellous work. May heaven's praise so echo in our hearts that we may be good stewards of the earth to your praise and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.